Christmas to you. We're so excited to be coming to you uh, from our sanctuary, but coming to you in your own home where you're celebrating Christmas. Now, this is a break in your Christmas celebration to add on to the things that would give you perspective for the whole day. That's really what this is. And I know it's on a Sunday, so it may be weird that you're not in church, but it's not weird that we talk about Jesus Christ on this day, for he is the reason for the season. Now, one of the things that I wanted to talk about today is the call to see goodwill. Oftentimes, goodwill is all around you. Shalom is all around you, but you can't see because oftentimes it is in a conflicting and contradictory context. But I want you to humble your heads and your hearts, open up your mind to what God will want to speak to you today. And uh, I want you to be blessed by it. Gather the family around, call somebody on the phone, let them know that there was a word coming to them. And it's not going to be long, but it's going to be strong. So you need to pay attention. Also, I will see you again on Saturday because we'll be right here in our New Year's Eve service at 10 uh, p.m. Doors are going to, well, service is going to start at 10 p.m. Doors are going to open at 9 p.m. And we're going to have a wonderful time in the Lord. So I'll see you this coming Saturday, this coming Saturday at 9 p.m. Doors are going to open, 10 p.m. Service is going to start. Crystal Aiken is going to be here. Maurice Brown is going to be here. We're going to have such a celebration in the Lord. We're going to celebrate all the things that God has done for us. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be positive. Wear your best. Come in your tucks and your tails. We're going to be, we're going to be dressed to the high heavens, dressed to the nines, and your bow ties and everything, and your gowns. Women, let's go. We're going to have a great time. Listen to what God wants to say to you today. It is the calling to see goodwill. Check this out. Good morning, family, and Merry Christmas to you. Wow, what a wonderful opportunity to come into your homes right now. And I, this is uh, kind of weird, right, that we're doing Christmas on Christmas Day, that we're doing this service on Christmas Day from this vantage point. But uh, this is something that I think that would still be a blessing to you and to your family. And hopefully you can gather the family around because Jesus still is the reason for the season. Uh, I just want to just speak something over you and, and pray over you. This is not going to be long, so gather everybody around and let's, uh, let's bring in our hearts and our heads to the real meaning of this particular day. In the Bible, the book of Luke, the second chapter, verses 8 through 19, it says this. It says, in the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock at night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood near them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were terribly frightened. And so the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly army of angels, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among people with whom he is pleased. Verse 15, And when the angels had departed from them into the heaven, the shepherds began saying to one another, Let's go straight to Bethlehem then and see this thing that has happened which the lord has made known to us and they came in a hurry and found their way significant they found their way to mary and joseph and the baby as he lay in the manger and when they had seen him they made known to the state made known the statement which had been told them about this child and all who heard it were amazed about the things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary treasured all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds went back glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, just as had been told them. Now, this is a wonderful time of the year 
The winter solstice or the December solstice is the point in which the path of the sun in the sky is farther south. At the winter solstice, the sun travels the shortest path through the sky, resulting in the day of the year with the least sunlight and therefore the longest night. In the lead up to the winter solstice, the days become shorter and shorter. And then on the evening of the solstice, according to NASA, winter begins. In the Northern Hemisphere, it occurs annually on the 21st or 22nd of December. So here we are in a season of cold and darkness, but we gather together to celebrate the light. The season brings with it an obvious contradiction. For in the greatest season of darkness, we are reminded of the light of the world. This is very interesting because as we're looking into our text, we see that the shepherds were watching their flocks at night. Watching over them, making sure that they were protected, making sure that they were covered at night. Now these shepherds would do this masterfully and they would do it faithfully every night. But this night would be a very strange and significant night for them. For while they were on their watch, the angel of the Lord would come. And the angel of the Lord would speak to them. And, and in this instance, they would be called from their post of watching to a posture of finding. Because on this day of Christmas, it's not just about watching the gifts and watching everyone be happy and watching all of the things that's happening in the world. Really, it's about finding Christ in the midst of what you're called to watch. So this is what the angel of the Lord said to the shepherds. He said, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people for today in the city of David. There has been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby, the Messiah, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And the Bible says that they, as they said that, that there are a multitude of angels that then began to join with them in chorus and singing glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace among people with whom he is pleased. Some translations would say goodwill to all men because that's what the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ would symbolize, goodwill. See, they are called to look for a divine contradiction. They're called from watching the shepherds or watching the sheep at night to finding a divine contradiction, a divine contradiction in which the Lord of Lords would be birthed in a lowly place. Oh God, because the birth of Jesus Christ on the day that we celebrate Christmas is really a contradiction when you think about it. Uh, Augustine of Hippo says it like this. He says, he by whom all things were made was made one of all things. The Son of God by the Father without a mother became the Son of Man by a mother without a father. The Word who is God before all time became flesh at the appointed time. The Maker of the Son was made under the Son. He who fills the world lays in a manger great in the form of God, but tiny in the form of a servant. This was in such a way that neither was his greatness diminished by his tininess, nor was his tininess overcome by his greatness. See, the whole narrative of Christ being born was one big contradiction. How can something that starts so small be so great? How can something born in a manger be so wealthy? 
Contradictions then are a part of the believer's life. And I'm quite sure that within the context of your life right now, you will see many contradictions. How can you be doing so well when we are in a recession? How can you still be blessed as you are when the whole year there have been some tough times? How can the family still come together and laugh when there have been times in which you have gathered together and even sometimes been separated, separated and cried? Life is filled with contradictions. How can I have joy in my heart and still have grief in my heart as well? Life is filled with those kinds of contradictions. But these shepherds, they are called to seek goodwill and live it. Now, seeking goodwill is sometimes something that you've got to find. It is something that you've got to be intentional about, something that you've got to put emotion on the shelf and go after because you're not going to be able to find goodwill if you don't seek after it. You've got to be intentional about it. See, the part that I love about this story is that God will speak to the shepherds and the shepherds would have to leave their flock and go find Christ. <laughs> they would have to find the goodwill. They would have to find Jesus. They would have to find the Prince of Peace. No, 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 he wouldn't come to them, but they would be sent on this journey of finding goodwill. See, a part of what goodwill means is, is shalom. See, uh, part of it, it means to be children of God, to be engaged in the work of making peace in a hostile world. What is often translated in this verse as the word welfare or goodwill, peace or prosperity, is the Hebrew word shalom, and it means peace and prosperity. But with our Western minds, we often think about peace as merely the absence of conflict. But shalom is much more than that. See, shalom is about wholeness. It's about finding wholeness when you're in the context of brokenness. It's about finding peace when you are in a context of conflict. It's, it's an intensely relational word. It has to do with all parties in a given relationship being able to flourish and to thrive. See, the concept of shalom teaches us uh, that we were made to flourish in our relationships with God, with one another, with our own selves, with the systems and the structures that govern us and with the whole of the created order. Lisa Sharon Harper, author of The Very Good Gospel, speaks of shalom in this way. She says, shalom is what God declared. Shalom is what the kingdom of God looks like. Shalom is when all people have enough. It's when families are healed. It's when churches, schools, and public policies protect human dignity. Shalom is when the image of God is recognized, it's protected and cultivated in every single human. Shalom is our calling as followers of Jesus' gospel. It is the vision God set forth in the garden and the restoration God desires for every broken relationship. Shalom is what our souls long for. Shalom is the very good in the gospel. It is, it is the thing that we search for during this time. Yeah, I know. We have the tendency when we gather together as families to find fault with each other. But I wonder, can you search for shalom? I wonder, can you find shalom in the midst of your gathering? I wonder, can you find goodwill to all men, to all mankind, to your spouses, to your children, to your mother, to your father, uncles, aunties, cousins, grandmothers, grandfathers, distant cousins, <laughs> those that are foes, those that are friends. I wonder, can you find shalom for them? Because the Bible says that the angel of the Lord spoke to the, the shepherds and said that this Savior is born for all people. Not just you, but for everybody. So I want us to understand that we light candles. This is the spirit of Advent, and we light candles as a representative of certain specifics to this season. 
We light the first candle. The first candle is called the angel's candle. And the angel's candle symbolizes peace. It reminds us of the message of the angels. Peace on earth, goodwill toward men. We are reminded that we seek the welfare of all people. To make it more practical, we can make sure people are faring well. Call somebody that you haven't called. Check on a friend. Check on a loved one. Maybe somebody has been dealing with and you know that they maybe around this time is dealing with grief. Call on them. Check on them. This is the peace of God as our minds are stayed on him. We maintain this peace even if it's in the midst of a contradiction. We remind ourselves that we are still light in darkness. The second candle that we light symbolizes hope. And it is sometimes called the prophecy candle. Now, in remembrance of the prophets, especially Isaiah, who foretold the birth of Christ, but it is type and shadow of the fact that before Jesus ever became a living flesh, he was a prophetic thought. And that everything that happens in your life starts with a prophetic thought. It started in the mind of God, so your hope should always be high and lit up during this time because it represents the expectation that is felt in the anticipation of the coming Messiah. And there is something coming that's great for your life. So you should celebrate and your hope should be high. The third candle that we light represents faith. Now, it is called the Bethlehem candle. It has a reminder of Mary and Joseph's journey to Bethlehem and the journey of the shepherds to find Jesus in Bethlehem and the journey that we take every day to seek and find and live for Christ in the world. Yeah, as you are taking your journey to the tree, to the Christmas tree, or taking your journey to the dinner table, or taking your journey over to somebody's house or a friend's house or a loved one's house. I want you to walk in faith because faith is a journey and I want you to expect for God to do something great when you get there because God is always calling for us to seek him even in the darkest contradictions. And as we light the fourth candle, we light it to symbolize love. Yeah. The reason why Jesus is allowed to be birthed into the earth is because God so loved the world. And love is grace and mercy and action, giving in constant motion. His love never fails and it covers us. It chastises and collects. It conceals to reveal. It calls and heals. It develops and delivers. Love never fails. It is a constant light in the contradiction of darkness. And as we light the fifth candle, the fifth candle is type and shadow. Of his joy. It is called the shepherd's candle. It's meant to remind us of the joy that the world experienced at the birth of Jesus and as well as the joy that we are called to have even if it contradicts the context of our lives. The joy that we're called to have even if there is pain all around us. See, this joy that we have, the world didn't give it to us. The world can't take it away. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. This is the reason why we celebrate. We say, joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart 
prepare him room and heaven and nature sing and heaven and heaven and nature sings he who rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of His righteousness and wonders of His love. Come on, gather the family around. Come on, let's sing it together. No matter how you're feeling, come on, contradict that feeling and let's have some joy come right now into where you are. Come on, this is your clarion call to cheer up. Jesus Christ is born. Let's go. Come on, say it. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him food. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And the mind and hand and nature Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let all the song implore. Wild fields and blood, frost hills and flames. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of His righteousness and wonders of His love and wonders of His love and wonders and wonders of His love. Now listen, I want you to turn up your television, turn up your radio, turn up your phone, and I want everybody to gather, come on, get the family together, this is a celebration, come on, dance! Joy is it, joy is it, joy is it, joy is it, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, joy is it, 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 Joy is it. 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 I've got his joy. Joy is it. I've got his joy. Put those hands together. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. You should be getting somebody's name on your head right now that you can call. Somebody needs some joy today, and you are the bringer of joy. That's right. You are the bringer of joy. You are Santa Claus today. You are Jesus today. You are the bringer of joy. Somebody needs to hear some joy and feel some joy from you. Come on, come on, come on. Joy is it. 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 I'm going to pray, <laughs> but we're going to leave you to it. <laughs> I know it's some good food there waiting on you. If you haven't already opened up gifts, I know gifts are waiting on you. I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my brother. I pray for my sister. I pray that this would be a day that their hearts and their minds would be filled with joy. I pray, oh God, that in the midst of everything that we may be going through, that all the contradictions of our lives, oh God, we thank you, Father, that the birth of Christ still reminds us 
that there is light even in the midst of darkness, that there is joy in the midst of sorrow, that there is peace in the midst of chaos. We thank you, Father, that your son being birthed reminds us that there is still hope for a dying world. And we ask right now that the joy that the, you give to us, the joy that the Holy Spirit imparts, would be imparted into our hearts, into our minds, oh God, that you would do something miraculous for all people who will hear this, who will see this, in the name of Jesus. Now bless your people like never before, like only you can, all day, every day, and in this season. Thank you for joy! Somebody holler on joy! to you. Joy, Merry Christmas to you. Joy, I'll see you joy, this Saturday. Joy, I'll see you joy, at 10 o'clock. We're going to have the New Year's joy, Eve service right here joy, at 10 o'clock. I'll joy, see you Saturday. 10 o'clock. Wear your best clothes. Come on in your tux and your tie. Yep. Put on your gowns, ladies. It's going to be one for the ages. We are going to celebrate. We're going to have joy coming out of one season into a new season. I hope you're ready. I hope you bring your expectation. Bring your faith. Bring your hope. Bring your love. <laughs> bring all of it because we're going to celebrate God like never before. All right. Enjoy your Christmas. Merry Christmas to you and happy New Year. See you Saturday. Joy is it. Joy is here. Joy is here. Joy is here. Joy to the Joy. world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And the burn and burn and nature sing. If there is something that is said or something that is preached or taught and sung that ministers to your heart, I want you to consider giving. I want you to consider sowing a seed because even though it is Christmas and even though we have given our gifts to each other and blessed each other, I want you to be a blessing to the house of the Lord. Remember, he is the reason for the season and for all the gifts that you've given to somebody else. See you later. Peace. A kingdom celebration, a praise party. We've lost and we learned, but we gained so much in return. 2022 has been a blessing for us, and we're so grateful for each and every one of you. So join us on New Year's Eve at 10 p.m. as the kingdom goes up. We're about to celebrate in our king's name for all he's done for us. Our fine arts and music department, who serve you each and every week with their spiritual gifts, musical talents, and so much more, along with special guests Crystal Lakin and Maurice Brown, they're about to blow us away. Doors open at 9 p.m. because you know we can't wait to see you in all your formal affair goodness. So bring your best and come get blessed. New Year's Eve with the Potter's House of Fort Worth. See you soon, family.